Hello and welcome back to Console Cowboys. In the previous videos we went over RF hacking basics and using RF crack for analysis. This video is part of a blog at Console Cowboys, the link is in the description. The data used in this video is on that blog so you can walk through the RF crack functionality if you don't have your own target gate. Today we're going to take a look at how to take this action of a car going through a gate and reverse engineer the signal into a device that will allow us to open the gate like this. This will be performed against a gate using a toggle switch remote. There are many types of RF targets, some using rolling code, others using a toggle switch or auto sync features. Which you are targeting is for you to determine with your analysis. There are a few reasons why we might want to do this. Most notable in my case would be to bypass the gate during a penetration test off hours with previously captured signals when there is no signal to capture or the physical tester has no RF background and a device will be easier. The device shown was a Chamberlain Universal Remote. If we take a look at the data sheets, it's running at 300 to 390 megahertz. If we take a look at the test report, we can see all the frequencies within that range that it's using. In this case, it looks like it's using 300, 310, 372, and 390. Most notably in here, it's using 390, 315, and 310 on most configurations. The reason this is important is we need to know the common frequencies that a universal remote using a toggle switch would use when opening a gate. That way we can scan and figure out what frequency this gate is using. We can do that with RF crack. Using our 310, 315, and 90, we determine one of the most common frequencies. Here you'll see a video of a gate, and as the 390 megahertz is scanning, it captures a signal, and the gate starts to open. So we know that we're now running on 390 megahertz. In order to configure the toggle switches on the remote, we have to determine what those toggle switches are. We can use RF crack to graph the signal by copy-pasting it. We use the minus N, meaning no yardstick, minus G for graphing, and minus U to upload our signal. Above, it graphs our signal for us. We can determine the toggle switches based on the difference in the size. You'll see two different sizes above, and then some random data at the beginning and the end. So our possible switches are up, up, down, 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 up, 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 or down, down, up, up, up down, 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 down. We can configure that into our remote. Another thing I should mention is that while we're scanning, it's also logging all of the signals captured. We can cat this out based on copy pasting the log. You'll see here the same output as above. This is useful if you want to leave a box next to the gate for a long period of time and either pick it up later or connect to it over cellular or Wi-Fi hotspot and collect all of the data for offline analysis. Next, we're going to set up a sniffer on 390 megahertz and configure our remote for one of our determined configurations of down, down, up, 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 down, 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 leaving the rest of the toggle switches down since they don't pertain to us. We'll then set up our analysis comparison with RF crack using the original capture and running a live capture for each click of the remote. The way the remotes work is on each click, it sends a configuration for different manufacturers. So as we go through this, you'll see it comparing each of the current signals to the original signal. That way we can determine which click is the actual one to open the gate. You will also see RF crack on the right hand window, giving you a analysis of how correct this signal is to the original. So in the last one, it was 0.19, and in the previous ones, 0 0.0, 0 0.6. Now we're hitting 0.69, and these are the percent matches. So what we're looking for is something that's 80 or 90%. So as we go through this, each click has multiple signals. It analyzes all of the signals and then graphs the highest percent match. With both the graph and the numbers, we should be able to determine which click is the gate while we're remote from the gate. Generally, we would have access to the gate and be able to click until the gate opens. But since we're doing this in a hotel room 
or at home, we don't have access to that, so we have to analyze the data and reverse the signal. Another thing to note is that not every click will give us a graph or numbers. That's because it's sending on a different signal that we're not listening on, and we don't care about that as we've determined that the gate is using 390 megahertz. Here, you'll see that there is a 94% match in the signals and that the graph looks almost identical. At this point, we would wanna hit the right button on the clicker and configure our remote to use that signal. We should then be able to hand this device to the red team penetration tester and allow him to go back and open the gate as if he was a normal user. So as a regular user, let's walk outside with our newly configured remote and give it a go. And you'll notice the gate opens with no problem. The signal's reversed and you can now use this off hours when there's no signal to capture. This is just one way to analyze and reverse frequencies and make use of them. Also a few examples of newer functionality within RF Crack for logging and graphing. There have been many RF Crack updates for loading and saving configuration data as well. You can explore all of these within the codes wiki for each release. If you learned something or enjoyed the video, hit the like button. If you want to be updated on new videos, hit the subscribe button below. Thank you.